This week's is all about flowers. Right, this week we're going to talk about flowers. Um, whether or not in a house or in a garden, what you should do is just some tips first and then we'll go out for a walk um, in a local wood and see what flowers we come across. But first, Eva, obviously a bunch of the flowers are quite nice, but they sometimes can crowd the picture out a little bit. Um, a single flower on its own with a nice background. Think about the, the background. Uh, obviously, if you've got something which is horrible in the background, it's not gonna work. You, the, you want something plain behind it, so there's nothing there to see. Uh, I've got a nice green wall here. Um, so I don't need a backdrop or anything. Um, green always goes well with plants. Uh, it's also a muted colour, um, so it's not actually going to be more impressive than what the flower is. Um, points of, there's a lily there, um, always focus points on flowers tend to be always the, the stamen in their centre, uh, whether or not it's a big plant or not, unless if you're taking a picture, say if you've gone outside and um, that would be number one, right? And, but equally, if say there was an insect crawling down this leaf, you might think about changing the focal point from being here to where the insect is. Obviously, when you haven't actually got a much of a background, if you're working on a plain wall like we are here, um, the background isn't that important because um, there's nothing there. So we can have quite a large field of depth. So technically you could have a bug crawling on the leaf, which is still being focus, as well as the stamen being focus, as well as the whole of the flower, because it's interesting. But equally, if you've gone out into the woods and there's not a flower there, it's quite interesting trying to change the field of depth. So that's the F, F number, increasing it and decreasing it. Um, so the field of depth is shallow or further away. So you could have um, a flower which is here, which is really sharp, and the background, which would be blurred. Um, or vice versa, you could have something in the foreground, um, some trees laying down, uh, which are, you can make out what they are just, but the focal point is in the distance. But also think about framing things. Um, because you've gone out to the woods and there's trees up there, um, use the shape of the trees to frame things with. That works quite well. Um, I should take a few of the flowers. Um, I mean, key things are get them sharp, make the picture interesting. I mean, a bunch of flowers on there isn't particularly that exciting, I don't think, but we can improve upon it. Uh, equally, I left these here because these are well past their best. I did take some pictures when they were fresh, but also what they're in, they work well. Um, but if you've got some, say if you just had a bunch of flowers um, and they're coming to the end of their life, before you throw them away, leave them in a vase in the shed or something for a day. Wait till they've sort of really died back so they're all dry and brown take a picture and do it in black and white um, and think about the contrast from the back that can work really well as well so not just I mean these are coming to the end of their life which is a shame but equally put them out of the way before you throw them in the bin uh, or in the compost heap which would be the responsible thing to do <laughs> uh, try, take a picture but do it in black and white and see how it comes up with a black background or a white background, so they're contrasting. That can be quite pretty, make it quite interesting. Um, I'll take some pictures and then we should go for a walk um, and uh, we'll do some more. Sometimes 
Ladies' wood. Bluebell season. Flowers are out. Aha, a seat. That's just what we need. We are in the middle of Ladies Wood, bluebells around us, gathering lights, all I've brought in my bag, camera, spare battery, spare SD card and a macro lens. That's all I'm taking today. Just a beautiful day to be out. Let's go and have a look at some flowers and see some different techniques. Right, before we go too far, just looking at bluebells, I've spotted these beautiful little tiny white flowers here. And uh, I'm gonna take a couple of pictures of those. Um, I've just switched over to manual. You could use uh, uh, aperture priority or the speed, but manual is most versatile. Um, change the F number to a high one. So I'm gonna have F22. So it reduces the amount of light coming in. Uh, and I'm gonna slow it down so if you put it on your back screen there, you can won't see anything at all. There's only very little light coming through. And then I'm going to just use my pop-up flash and focus in on our flower. Using the pop-up flash. And I shall post these pictures on there. And I thought it was just quite nice. I mean, obviously we're doing bluebells and other flowers. Um, low key, brilliant daylight outside. You can try the, doing the same thing with a bluebell. That would work quite well. Big swathes of one colour are never that interesting. Look around, see where you can make a frame out of something. Just behind me, there's an arch, which is uh, obviously an old tree that's fallen down. Get, change your angle, get lower down, take a picture through the arch. Um, think about the field of depth. Um, what, do you want the whole picture sharp? Do you want things which are close in focus or further away? Um, so there's, there's loads of scope rather than just go out and take a picture. Also think about the height you are because obviously try thinking of taking it from a different view to you normally see to make it more in interesting. I should take a few here and I'll stick them on so you can see. Groups of three work well in photos, but equally with this just behind me, you could use the three trees as the framework to your picture, rather than just to see a blue, works quite well. You 
you can always take it slightly wider than you need it and crop it when you get home. It's quite interesting sometimes just looking at the shadows and things uh, the trees make on the ground. We're using the path as the leading line. So that's giving you some inspiration to go out and take some pictures of flowers, um, whether or not it's a, a bluebell wood in your garden. Um, so think of the techniques we've done in the last previous videos and how you could incorporate them. Um, close up, high key, low key, think about using things which are in the picture as a frame. Think about the colours. Do you remember the colour wheel? Uh, if not, go back onto the Have a Look at the Colour Wheel video I put on. Um, there's lots of interesting things and ways of looking at things. And the idea is, rather than just take a snap, move to the left, move to the right, a bit lower, a bit higher. Um, think about the field of depth. Just to make the picture more interesting, because if you come out to somewhere like here, and there's just a sea of blue, Actually, after a while, a sea of blue can be a bit uninteresting. Um, blue and green, colour wheel, do I need to say more? Um, so, get out there, get your camera, whether or not you're actually going to go out for a walk in your garden, or just even a bunch of flowers from one supermarket, uh, and try taking some pictures of flowers.